Alright folks, this video is going to be a doozy, uh, guarantee. There's going to be a lot of controversy going on here. I got Rocky beside me fixing to lay down. No, he's going in there. Alright, we're going to talk about I'm going to start this with a voter thing just to get you on to how crazy people's thought processes are and what are the motivating factors behind all the crazier than hell things you see. Uh, I'm going to start with that to psychologically prepare you for what I'm going to talk about afterwards. So hang on, because this is going to go into, and you're going to want to hear this. Uh, a response, an open response to a video a young man put out about black superiority in athletics and otherwise. And I'm going to respond to that. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Uh, I'm also going to talk about some of the craziness in boxing fans today and how they respond to things against the other guy, the guy that's not their guy, and the, the logic, the foul logic, and ignorance that they use. So you're going to want to hang on to this one, of course, the, Maybe I'll switch up the order for the last two, but just hang on, bear with me here. Uh, in the United States, in the state of Wisconsin, uh, an election official was looking, and they caught something, and they said, hey, this ain't right. Uh, you can mail out these military, there's a a glitch or a loophole in the military voting process in that state. So you can vote anyone. You can get online and ask for 10,000 absentee ballots and claim military and put any name, any social security number you want down. Uh, or you could do 100,000. There's no limit on it. And put fake names and social security numbers down on it. And there's zero verification on those military absentee ballots. What a slap in the face to people that are serving overseas from that state. Or from any state. All right. Well, here's where the craziness comes in. The deputy director for that county and, and for voting in that county uh, started confirmed with the elections leader, the director of the voting in that county, the, I guess you call it the director of elections, or the chairman of the board of election, or chairwoman. So to shorten this up, the deputy director, to show the director how easy it is, does this and does three ballots and has them sent to the director of the chair lady of the voting in that county's house. So they come out of the gate wanting to expose this, how easy it is. All she did was get online, go to absentee voting and just uh, military voting and just plugged in three names and she actually just put different fake social security numbers down and sent the ballots out to the director. But they all were the same fake name. Uh, so anyway, they come out to expose it. So what does Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is liberal and Democrat do? They take 
the election officials to court and one woman just got sentenced for five years that works at the election board, uh, deputy director of the election board, because they did that sample uh, thing five years in prison. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? And the mayor says, I'm so glad that she, that they're getting locked up, that this is happening, because even if it's whistleblowing, when it comes to the elections, you can't do that, and we'll put you in jail. And, and the mayor just comes right out and basically says that in a written statement, mind you. So see how crazy that is? The exposers are the ones put in jail for five years. One of the ladies, I guess the other one's waiting on trial. I don't know how that's going to be working out. Did you see the insanity in that? The ones that expose the fraud, the ones that expose the crime, are the ones that are imprisoned. Uh, how would you like to be somebody that worked your ass off all your life, buckled down, went to college or, or whatever, maybe you worked your butt off through college, And while everybody else is running around and playing and getting high, they get elected to offices. And for your hard work and your diligence for justice, you get slung in prison for exposing bad things. And the others just got free. You know how many damn criminals they cut loose for really violent things and other things. And the big thing is walking off with retirement funds of hundreds of millions of dollars and don't serve a day in jail. Uh, it's just sickening. All right. So we're going to move on to the second. Now, that's the insanity. reason why I bring that up, that's the insanity that's got what I'm going to repeat here from a black gentleman that has a channel here, here in Columbia. He's an American. But the craziness he put out. Now, I didn't go to the end of, the, of his video. I stopped at mid-drift because I was like, I can't listen to this trash no more. But he's sitting there, a little entitled guy, uh, uh, living down here in Columbia. Uh, his job entails an online YouTube channel that has maybe a thousand people on it, so I don't even think it's monetized. And uh, so I don't even know if the guy's working. So anyway, it's not my business. Anyway, the guy comes on. He immediately starts expounding. Blacks are the, we are genetically superior to whites and all other races in uh, bodily and in athletics and going on and on about this dumb shit. Well, I stopped and I sent him a video reply and I'm going to explain more thoroughly my video reply to all of you. Uh, this is a truth that never gets, you can't, you, you can't mention it, but we're so shadow banned over here. We'll mention anything we please to mention and we don't care. Uh, when it comes into, a lot of times the truth offends all of us, any of us, so so be it. Uh, but the truth needs to be told. All right. For all this black superiority bullshit that's going around, uh, it's coming from an inferiority complex that blacks have. Uh, I'm just stating a fact there. Nobody's going to come out their house, get online, go on all this social media, and start bump chest puffing and uh, talking about their race is superior to all other races unless they uh, are down on the ladder. And they are down on the ladder, and I'm going to explain why. They're down on the ladder athletically and in athletics. Uh, and I'll explain it to you. Uh, in all areas, 
where the and you could say the Irish before the blacks in history. You had this happen to the Irish and then you had it happen to Africans, black Africans. Uh, so this happened, and this happened to all populations. So I don't mean it offensive, it's just the truth. Uh, when in West Africa they were selling slaves to the New World, both North and South America and the Caribbean islands and all in these areas, and the Bahamas and whatnot. Uh, these, a lot of the slave owners, uh, a lot of which were black in the United States. That was something you don't dare mention the truth about. One of the largest slave owners ever in, I believe it was South Carolina uh, in that state, that was a black guy and he had one of the biggest ownerships uh, in the history of that state if I got that state right and he was a black guy uh, so I wonder if his descendants would get the reparations off this and the other black slave owners would they automatically get the reparations that's enough for another subject so anyway, uh, when they got the slaves, what they would do, they'd take the strongest woman and the strongest man, and they would put them together. And then, of course, they would have children, and they were doing this to make the biggest, the, the most physically big and most physically strong uh, workers that they could get and this went on for several generations and it built up a prototype big strong uh, population of blacks in the western world in the new world where slavery was taking place uh, the eastern Africans that were being taken by Muslims uh, the ones that were allowed to survive, what black people in Western civilization don't understand uh, and, and they're ignorant to, uh, and all these race hustlers, irrespective of their color, what they're ignorant to, and what well, they know it. Uh, most of them are typically very, very smart. They know these things. And they, don't, they, don't, they would never mention it. Is that the, the, the nations of Islam, the Muslims, would take the black guys and they would chop their privates off uh, and make, I guess, what you'd call eunuchs out of them. Uh, so they would just castrate the black men. They weren't going to have them reproducing in, in their lands. Yet you see so many... Uh, African Americans north or south turn into Islam. And that, that's bred of ignorance right there, uh, not knowing reality or the truth. And uh, when you look at England, England was the first country to just outright ban slavery all through the world in any place they had, any colony or territory that they had. It was a white population that did that. Uh, in the United States, six million people died and stopped slavery. Uh, so there's a lot of sacrifice in this world by white people to stop slavery in all of the world. But funny thing, the only place where you're really going to go and really see slavery is in Africa. But we're going to get back on point to the athletic part. They bred the strong one with the strong one. But if you look at Africa, and, and uh, there was a famous newscaster, a famous NFL Today guy. He was the most famous guy. Uh, he was the Stephen A. Anderson, but a white guy of his time. Very popular uh, 
guy, and his they called him Jimmy the Greek. And he was in a restaurant, and he got interviewed, and he got asked a question about black athletic superiority. And he said, there's no superiority in athletics. And he explained what I just told you. He got fired. Uh, and that fact never gets mentioned again, lest ye be fired, or lest ye be today shadow banned, if you tell the truth. Uh I've had people where I've had debates over this. They they look over, you know, I tell them, where are all these Africans winning all these Olympics and competing for all these championships? Well, it's a money thing. No, it's not. Just go go to Africa and look around at the average everyday Africans. And they are not the biggest, strongest uh, uh group of places where you're going to go. I would wager to bet the the strongest peoples of where where you can go uh, would be the, the biggest, strongest, just naturally, athletically gifted, would probably be in the Caucasus and in, in towards Eastern Europe and uh, through Russia and portions of northern China and Mongolia, and and I would I would uh, wager to bet on the whole they're bigger, stronger, faster, uh, just come out of the womb more athletic. Uh, but the black population in North and South America, all, all that's artificial. That stemmed from something very bad, and that was slavery. And that's it. So then I replied back, well, if you're talking about the genetically, physically gifted with black people and that you guys are superior to all other races in that, then what happened to this? And see, the guy couldn't respond. He could not respond. Uh... Hey, well, he could have, and the normal, typical response would be the system set up against us up here. But the system's not set up against anybody up here. We know now, scientifically, uh, but I believe that it's because of cultural things. But at any rate, on average, the smartest, best academic race on this earth today would be Asian races, uh, would be Asians, uh, Koreans, Chinese, Japanese, just the whole Asians. Uh, they do extremely well. Uh, Indians, which is considered Asians, they are very, very intelligent. It, uh, you'd be hard-pressed to go into a hospital in the U.S. and not have to see a lot of Indian and Pakistani names. Uh, so it's just a fundamental truth. It doesn't mean another race is worse than another. But here's the problem. When you constantly come out, uh, uh, let me let me give you an example. I, if I were to come out daily and put down blacks and put down Chinese and put down uh, all these other races of people, by constantly talking about how great white people are, uh, a lot of what I'd be saying would be actual factual truth. Yet you never, you, I don't, and I'm white, you know. I don't, I don't see white people coming out, even being honest about the facts of the advancement of civilization, the advancement of athletics, the advancement of this, that, the other thing, the advancement of culture in general, the advancement of justice. Uh, I don't even come out and tell truths. Well, it was a white guy that did this. It was a white one that did this. It was a white one that did this. It was a white one that did that, 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 that. Uh, because I'm not a racist, race peddling jerk. I may be a jerk, but I'm not a race peddler. And 
I'm confident in being a white man and I'm com confident enough in being a white man. I just look at people in athletics for who they are, what they've accomplished, and I'm not focusing on this. There was a time, uh, especially in the boxing world, boxing used to be the most popular sport ever, ever. You could have the baseball, the football, the rugby, the uh, soccer, all of it. You could combine it, but the big thing was the World Heavyweight Championship. That was a big thing. That that was the creme de la creme, the crown of crowns in sports. And uh, uh, blacks would root for black fighters. Is there any racist thing in that? No. Whites would root for white fighters. Um, and the superiority that people come into these subjects, I'm going to talk about Jack Johnson Jack Johnson was a despicable piece of trash. I don't think he wrecked his car going through Fayetteville, North Carolina, or where he was at on the highway. I think somebody probably wrecked that piece of trash, probably ran him off the road or something. Uh, and it was probably another black person that he screwed over. And you hear Jack Johnson won. Jack Johnson won. Yet he never gave a black guy a chance at the title. Isn't that amazing? And that's where all this great white hope thing came from. But I'll remind folks, the, the years prior to Jack Johnson winning the championship, whites had it. Today, whites, got they got it all. You know, where's the superiority at? So I'm telling you that, that factually, biologically, and scientifically, that the North and South American populations of African Americans, both North and South, they were interbred for enough generations, and it did make them the most physically strong, the fastest, and things of that sort, the tallest, uh, and things like that. They'd breed a tall woman with a tall man. And uh, am I saying that because I, I'm proud of that? No, I'm not. I'm just fact-checking bullshit. And, I, and I'll continue to do so. I don't care who does it. Uh, you see, my king doesn't care or give a crap as to what my color is or what your color is. My king doesn't care. And my king is Jesus Christ. I'll tell you whose who's kings do care uh, would be Muslim and Islamic people uh, uh, in North and South America. They deeply care. They're like black superior, black superior. They're race superior. Um, you uh, there are also other races that do that. It's, it's not uh, uh, solely to black Americans that do that. I mean, it's, the shit's real. Everybody knows it, but there's no color that is so superior to another one. And you are seeing the results today of generation after generation of African Americans, both North American and South American, interbreeding uh, freely and no longer having slaveholders breeding the strongest with the strongest, the tallest with the tallest, and things that they did. And they're co coming back down. Hence, no world heavyweight champion any longer. Uh, so, here's the deal with me. Uh, if you are a, uh, a black person and you root for black boxers, that don't make you racist at all. If you are a 
white fella and you root for white boxers, that doesn't make you racist at all. Uh, we need to quit apologizing for feeling and doing what is God-given nature to us. God separated us all for a reason, folks. Uh, if you don't know that, you need to go get in the Bible and start to look at it. And now we're reassembling all together. And these were the same peoples. They were all the same color. And the Tower of Babel and Booth, we were separated. And I, I know that that's when the colors came and differences between us and huge cultural differences and languages and things like that. That's where they came from. And, uh, uh, but it is not, it is inherent, it is put on you by God himself to love your own people, to love your own culture, to love your own country. And there's nothing racist about that. So I'm just sick of hearing race crap. So I'll address it when I hear it. Uh, I unsubscribe to the guy over there. The guy knows. I've told him, you're here in Columbia. If you need my help, I'll help you. But I'm not going to sit and watch him online. I'm not going to hear his bull crap. Just not going to do it. Don't want no part of it. But if he needs my help as a fellow American, uh, if something happens with him, I will step up to the plate and help him. Sad thing about blacks, in my experience, uh, I'll give you one. Uh, 18, 19 year old boy was in Cartagena, that's a coastal city down here in Colombia, and the police beat the shit out of him. Well, number one, he took that attitude from North America and brought it to, to the Colombians. He had a hood up and one of, you know, there was eight or nine cops standing around at a corner, and one of the cops told me, take your hood down, we'll see who you are, and he wouldn't do it. Uh, they pistol whipped the hell out of the black boy, and uh, I reached out to help the black boy. I could have got right to him, could have got him right out of jail, and could have got him right back to North America. I could have done this within a matter of a couple of days. So what ended up happening to the black boy? Well, thanks to the people in North America, uh, the black Americans in North America, uh, they jumped all over me and didn't want me to go get him out of jail or me to help him because I was white. Literally. And that sounds far-fetched, but it's the truth. And they were sitting up there, the North African Americans, and they were putting up GoFundMe's all over the place, getting money, yet didn't help his kid. And I, I said, enough's enough, turned around and walked away. Kid sat in jail for, I, I don't know how long, six, nine weeks, something like that. All the black community in North America, I could have went right there and got him. They didn't want me to go help a, one of their fellow uh, black uh brothers they they wanted to raise money off off of one of the, their own and whites do that too and it's not right so uh that being addressed it's addressed uh, all right moving on to more idiocy in the boxing world all right tonight i am in a fight championship. Uh, it's boxing, bare knuckle, MMA, whatever. And I completely dominate and annihilate my opponent within one round. Those whom don't like me will say, well, he, he can't fight. He uh, the other guy was no good. They'll come up with everything in the book they can come up with to attack the guy they don't like. It's childish and it's ignorant. And online, we should be 
really welling on one another when we get that way, when people get that way. And uh, you look, you look, and you, you, you uh, the other part of the scenario, I, I'm a fighter. I'm fighting for a championship tonight. I go in. I make a comeback. Uh, I dominate the whole fight. But it goes the distance. One of those scenarios. Oh, he, he ain't nothing. Uh, the other guy took him to the finish. He ain't nothing. See? So you, you can't win with sports fans. It's just not possible. So if you are an athlete, just don't even give no mind to sports fans. Uh, take in the people that really root for you. Uh, they're with you. Their passion is that you win. Uh, true fans, in other words. And uh, uh, stay in with them. And the others don't even pay attention to it because it'll just make you crazy. Uh, back in my day, boxers, for example, champion boxers, most of them, they couldn't even stand the press. They'd sit there, they'd do these pressers or a box, that somebody catch a boxer for an interview, it'd end up turning into an argument. A boxer would have to establish the dominance over the reporter. And this came from assholes uh, that lied for and lied against specific boxers over the years. Burt Sugar, complete ass. Larry Merchant, complete ass. Uh, uh, there's a couple of guys I got in an online tussle with uh, here recently. The idiot that goes, well, let's get ready to rumble. I can't even remember his name. He's a Jewish guy. And then another Jewish guy who was on HBO boxing for a long time. And uh, they're just so liberal and communist. I'm like, the hell with these idiots. And that's what they are. They're idiots. And most people in the arts and entertain entertainment are idiots. So I just wanted to, I touched on a lot of stuff here. We went to town with it. Uh, I'm not going to go any further. Much love to my Christian brothers and sisters, but be assured if I see what I consider to be idiocy out there, racism out there, I'm going to call it out. At the risk of myself being labeled everything that they are. I don't care. You can label me what you choose to label me. I'm not long off going to meet the Lord. I ain't got time to worry about mass going on around him so uh, to my Christian brothers and sisters much